Hello, storytellers. It's Storytelling Ron, and I want to talk about for the little RPG Christian role playing game and how we don't have that in Hollywood in these artsy films. They're going to have they're not going to show the success of planting churches, right? They're always going to show movies that mock, scoff, uh, derail, demean the planting of churches, the spread of Christianity. So like this film here, just, and, it, and it, this sort of sparked this conversation or this, this video, I, I came across my YouTube feed, so I wasn't even looking for this, but um, you know, this is some video some dude did of our movie where there's some sort of, um, you know, dead bodies. This priest is going into Iceland in a remote area and he's going to plant a church and then he gets obsessed with, I don't know, photography or something. And then he goes crazy. And I suppose he dies. I don't know. The, I don't know what the. I read the IMD, I don't know anything about the movie that much. I read the IMDb re reviews because I wanted to know, is this what I think it is? It sounds like it. Ba based on the IMDb reviews, this is, I'm basing it off of that. This exa sounds exactly like any other secularist artsy film depicting uh, Christians as fools, uh, the planning of churches as idiocy or or a failure, and they show him building a church or whatever, and um, he goes crazy. Whatever, I, and, I, and I don't know about the filmmaker, if he's a Christian or not a Christian, um, but the only films that are going to be uh, in this world, um, <gasps> so artsy and amazing cinematography and beautiful, oh, what, the work of art, are ones that are going to obviously show um, the typical, uh, what's that, Apocalypse Now was written, was based off of the old book or whatever, you know, the Journey into Darkness or whatever it's called. They're only going to only going to allow that type of Christianity where where the priest or or cl clergy goes into an insanity route of darkness. They're only going to allow that and, and only that. But let's look at Iceland, you know, because this is where it's, where it's supposed to be. So Iceland is obviously started Viking pagan. And then now it's 72 percent Christianity. 60 percent of them go to the Church of Iceland, other Christians, no religion, 25 percent. And then a, some sort of weird paganism here at. 1.5%. So we can see that Christianity succeeded there. They planted churches there. Where's the films on that? Are they going to, are you going to see an art house film or, or an amazing film where the Christians actually successfully planted a church, even though we know that was in the hundred, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands uh, going on just in Iceland, much less Europe and America and everywhere else. They're not going to show films like that, right? Cause if they showed a film where they successfully planted a church, successfully growed in the community, ruined the community, successfully built up the society and made it better. That is, oh, that's a Christian film. Throw it in. Get, don't, no, 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 no. They're not going to fund it, right? None of the governments are going to fund it, uh, you know, with Danish film funds or whatever the heck they're doing. No way. So they're never going to depict what really happened. What, uh, you know, I'm just looking at the percentages here. Remember, this was back in 1000 AD or, or I don't know when they started, but but when the Vikings first landed there, 0% Christianity, right? 0%. Look at it now. It's like nearly 100. And this 25%, no religion. You know, that's in the, I think that's in the last um, 10, 20 years where the, uh, the atheism is exploding. Um, but what, whatever, that's another discussion. So so probably back then, 10 years, 10, 15 years ago, the, the Christianity here was probably 80, 90%. Um, and some Christian, you know, anyway. So my point being is that it was successful. The planting of churches was successful. They're not going to show that film. They're not going to show the film where the wonderful thing happened to these people. The positive thing happened to these people. Um, they stopped the date rape drugs. They stopped the the slavery of the enslavement of the people. Uh, they're not going to show that. And here's another film I want to go talk about that um, really, you know, as a child kind of messed me up or, or yeah, because later on in life I realized what the freak this was a bait and switch or whatever. Because dra the Dragon Slayer, the story, uh, the actual original story was uh, Saint George versus the Dragon, and you know, and there's a lottery, and then and he 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 fought, and the pagans were 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 doing the lottery to sacrifice their kids to the dragon, and a Christian came in and said this is wrong. And of course, today the the Christian is now the villain, and 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 and, and the lottery should have been kept going and and appease the dragon. That's what that's the modern day um, pagan view, right? And that's what my game is about too. So you could have a Swing George versus the Dragon in for the little RPG. Can't have it in Dungeons and Dragons. This is what you'd have in Dungeons and Dragons or some other role playing game. They took that story in, in Disney, and this is 1980 ish. When I was a kid, I love this movie. I love this movie. Oh my God, the best movie ever. I was seduced by this movie. I was seduced by these high priests of Disney. Um, 
in their pagan theatrics. By the way, magicians in, in sixth century used theatrics. Theatrics was was what their magic was. They used theatrics to get the people and the and the and the and the Caesars and the leaders and the kings to accept them as their advisors or take take on them as their um, thing. Even though many of the governments or kings and dukes then illegalized paganism, they only illegalized it at the at that grand level. They always had a sorcerer or advisor or some sort of uh, person that soothsayer, you know, like a fortune teller. Uh, you know, they always had some of those guys in their advisory council. But this movie really ticks me off. And I'm I'm so glad the actor, the main actor, hates this movie. Um, hates that he did this movie. But this movie shows pagans or wizards or magi- an acolyte, a magician, doing this, being the hero and saving the day, and fighting the dragon, confronting this tyranny of the dragon and the, and the lottery. But and they showed the clerics the cl- in there as being idiots, the Christians as being idiots, use- useless. You know, one, the first guy burns and dies, the first cleric, and the second one. They kind of show them sort of maybe converting and taking credit or, or the Christians came in and did nothing. It was the wizard who did it. And yet in the historical documents of the legend and of the story, it was a Christian who came in and said, this is wrong. Stop it and risk their life. Many of them just being missionaries and not even warriors, but St. George is about a knight who came in and vanquished the dragon, the beast to stop them from sacrificing their children. I mean, I mean, the prince is involved, which makes the story even cooler. So that's what ticks me off about this movie. I, I really, I do have fond memories of this movie, but again, it seduced me into thinking, in into believing in Dungeons and Dragons. I love this as a Dungeons and Dragons thing, and not believing in Christianity, not believing in that Christians can do things, and that you know, and that they are fools and stuff. So that's what this movie did for me. What is D and D and movies doing for you and your children? What is it doing for you? What are you allowing to come into your home to seduce your children or you into enjoying this and not enjoying for the Lord or my for the Lord RPG or Christian games or, or, or Christian edification and fellowship? Um, what is that? So that's my point of this. These movies are here to, to draw you these games like D and D are here to draw you away from God my game or any other Christian role playing game that you can find uh, is to to get you is to bring you back to God, bring you back to I'm gonna get my camera back up. Um, bring your kids back to God, um, encourage you in this in this uh, game to to teach lessons, to teach them about how Christians draw the line at and don't have no fuzziness about it and confront paganism. Um, and hopefully confront it in a peaceful way, but you can have some, how many pagans are going to give up their child sacrifices or, or sacrificing whatever, um, or lottery or whatever they're going to do. How, how, how many are going to give that up? You know, if you, you know, and this is a great thing. You could, you, you could use St. George and the drag. They're not going to give up their lottery to give up their children. So you're going to have to go stop the beast for them to do it because the pagan, though, the, and you can have a sorcerer, witch who supports the dragon, you know? and feeds it or, or makes it stronger or the beast or whatever. So that's, that's a game and you got to teach it to the kids and you got to, so I'm just going to keep preaching this, uh, for the rest of my life until God says I need to go up. Um, but, uh, that's it. Okay. I just want to, man, for the Lord RPG, it's free. It's on my website. Grab it and contact me. If you need help, I'll help you.